Hey, Architect Nation, Enix Sears here, and I'm just headed out on my afternoon walk. Today, we're gonna to talk about architecture as media. Cool, so in architecture school, you may have even considered this concept of architecture as media, meaning that every building has a meaning, and as you create architecture, you're creating meaning in the world, meaning that's gonna be interpreted by people. What I'd have you consider, though, I want you to consider and think about the idea of your architecture firm as media. So let me explain what I mean. This morning I, I had the opportunity to speak with an old friend. So many of you may have had the chance to speak with or know about Sue Asina. So she's a member of my team. Sue Asina generally conducts a lot of the enrollment calls for architects who want to join our business growth programs. She also handles a lot of the scheduling of our live events. She's an all around A team player. And the way I met Sue was I met her son at a live mastermind event. So I went to a business consulting kind of seminar where I was learning and sitting down next to me and walks this guy, this you know, medium, medium height Asian guy and he's wearing this, uh, this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles hat and he has this kind of swagger about him. And he's very friendly, very cool, we, we, we end up chatting. It turns out that he's an, he's an actor, right? And he was in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies, which is why he was wearing the hat. Um, but anyways, he has a huge following. Uh, he's very popular back in the Philippines and also here in the United States. Anyways, um, so we initially met there. That's how I met Sue because I was chatting with Ernie, her son. And Ernie said, uh, I, I, I was telling, uh, telling Ernie that I was looking for someone to join my team that could handle a lot of the administration work that we have at Business of Architecture. And so he introduced me to his mom, Sue, and hey, it's been, it's been fantastic ever since, right? Now what was really cool is this morning I had a chance to catch up with Ernie because I do a, a weekly, well I do a daily call with Sue every single morning and Ernie happened to be there. And so Ernie basically told me, he said, look Enoch, it was, I really look on that time when you and I were in that room together, that was a pivotal time in my career, a pivotal time of, of reinvention. It's, it's a time when I can, I can count the beginning of a new era. Oh look what I found, golf ball. So this will be fodder for a future video, but there's a golf course right over those buildings right there. I better watch out when I'm walking around here. Anyways, he says, you know, a lot of times we can divide our life up into episodes, right? So I know that one of my life episodes started right after I graduated from architecture school and went through my internship and my licensure. That's sort of like a distinct episode. And then when I got laid off and my whole business world collapsed and I started business of architecture and starting to do what I'm doing now, well, that could be considered another episode. And so Ernie was telling me, yeah, he's all, I, I, that was a distinct episode the past three or four years for me kind of started with that moment. And he said, what I realized at that moment is that the future of business is understanding the concept of media and being a media company. So Gary Vaynerchuk always says, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, the guy who, you know, founder of Vayner Media. He's all over social media. If you haven't heard of him, go look him up. But Gary Vayner, Gary V, for short, says that everyone, every business, is a media company. Okay, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. So I would have you consider, as you look at the business landscape, and as you look at the competition that you may be involved with right now, as the as the marketplace gets more and more competitive as there's more firms struggling for the same amount of work, and as architects and other design firms and even design build firms get in the mix, and as they start to become better at marketing and selling, you're gonna to have to get better at marketing and selling as well. And one of the key ways to win in this environment is to differentiate your firm and be different than your competitors. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to become an educator in the market, meaning that you're sharing your expertise openly, just like I'm doing right here in this video, right? You're building an audience. So this is what we mean by your firm becoming a media company that you're sharing your expertise, you're building a platform, okay? And this platform becomes something that your staff can get engaged in, that you can get engaged in. But going back, so there was this, this pivotal thing that Ernie was talking about, and he said, yeah, I realized at that time that I needed to be, it was about media, it was about content, that content, expertise, and business were all interrelated. And he said, for those next three years, he was getting his entrepreneurial wheels on, meaning that he was learning a lot of new lessons about entrepreneurship, right? This is what we do, this is what we do, this is what I do all the time. Failing forward, failing, 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 until finally something works, right? And so now he said he's begun a new, a new period where he's getting into something else and he's decided he's literally gonna build um, a, um, 
pretty much a, a literal media company. So he's been producing some amazing videos for very high, high profile stars that you may or may not have heard of. Um, but he's doing some really cool stuff. And what my takeaway from that conversation again was twofold. Number one, media, the power of media. Number two, this idea that as, as entrepreneurs, we need to find our feet. That success in business and success in your architecture firm is a factor of failing forward, right? That you may have been struggling for the past five years. You may be struggling right now, right? But like, I think it was Ted Turner said, when, the, when um, someone asked him why his sports teams were just failing again and again and again, I think it was the Atlanta Braves. Ted, did you ever give up when the, you know, year after year after year, your team came in dead last? Not dead last, but it did poor horribly. And he said, not at all, because you know what? We weren't, we, weren't, we weren't planning on winning. We were just preparing to succeed, right? So he knew at that time that maybe that they weren't going to take the World Series. But at the same time, he didn't view it as a failure. It wasn't like this is the end, because failure only happens when we give up. Cool. I mean, that's what I tell my kids all the time. You probably tell your kids the same thing. You know, failure only happens when you give up. So the question is, and sometimes what is hard to remember is when we're in the thick of it, we're, when we're in the thick of something that's difficult, that's challenging, things aren't going the way we'd like them to, do we realize that life is not a game of 100% successes all the time? We're not going to score the hole in one every single time. That it's about feeling forward, it's about experimenting, it's about testing, seeing what works and improving, learning the skills of an entrepreneur, learning how to market and sell, looking, learning how to communicate your value. Okay, that's not only how you get fulfillment as a person as you begin to break through new barriers, that's also how you succeed as a businessman, as a businesswoman, and as an architect CEO. So hope this value's been, this, this value, this video has been valuable to you. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, head on over to businessofarchitecture.com and pick up the free resources that are available there for architects like yourself who want to grow your business and make a big impact. Carpe diem.